I was uh, looking at my Facebook the other day and I seen that some people, you know, they're like, God, why do I keep going through the same things? Why do I go through the fire? Why do I go through the tests and the trials? I don't understand, you know, and some people, they get to the point where they want to give up and they want to quit and they just want to they want to let go and throw in the towel. But understand that, you know, the test and trial is just another tool that uh, God uses, you know, to bring glory to him, first of all, and then also for you to learn to trust him and to build your faith and to give you some muscles. You know what I'm saying? You, you, can't, you can't have no results, you know, if you don't hit the gym. And that's all the test and trial is, is hitting the gym. Now, there's a lot of ways you can hit the gym, reading the word, fasting, praying, you know, being obedient. But the test and trial going through the fire, that is one of the biggest ways that you hit the gym because you have to trust God. That trust muscle, that faith muscle, it gets built up. Now, but what the devil comes and does, he tries to combat that. You know, God gives him the green light like he did with Job. And the devil's like, oh, you know, watch, Job's going to Job's gonna turn on you, you know. But God wants, to, God wants to see your response in the test and the trial. And the more that you trust God, the more that you, you hold on and believe and you don't wave to the side when you're in that test and that trial, the bigger your muscles see, get. The devil is a master see, what the deceiver. Devil does. And what he does is he's tr he tries to get your eyes off the prize. He tries he tries anything in his power to get your eyes off the promises of God, try to get your eyes off of God. That's why he puts you in the test, the trial, the fire. He puts you in the pit like Joseph. He uh, throws you to the lions because then all you see is the lions. Oh, all I see is the fire, you know? And, and then you forget about Jesus. You forget that God said you are more than a conqueror. You forget that God said the battle is not yours, it is mine. And that is, that is what the devil wants, you know, and he does it in so many different ways, you know. Um, God, can, you can feel God gave you a word or he gave you something to do, like with Noah. He said, I want you to build this big ark, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and it's going to rain and flood the earth. Noah could have been like, you know what? Those people come and they're laughing at him like, you know, why are you building this ark? And gave up because that's what God does a lot of times. Everyone is not always going to agree because uh, with the word or the mission that God gave you because they don't have the revelation that you have. God doesn't give everybody the same revelations. So some people are going to laugh at you and they're going to come against you. You can't be a people pleaser. What, what happens when the devil allows those people to come in your life, you start trying to please people. You know, you don't want to step on nobody's toes. You want to be their friend. No, if God gave you something, you don't let the devil take it away from you. No matter what, you don't doubt it. You don't doubt it. If God gave it to you, he gave it to you. It's yours. And the devil's gonna do everything to try to claw and get at it. He's gonna do it with people. You know, he's gonna do it by putting you in the lion's den. He's gonna do it by, um, like Joseph, throwing you in the pit to make you feel like you're all alone and you're secluded, but you are not alone. You have God. See past the fire. See past the pit that you are in. See past the lions. And see Jesus. And see the victory that he has promised you. You are a child of the king. All the devil wants to do is trick you and put things in front of your eyes and distract you from the promises. The devil does not want you to deliver the word or be what God wants you to be because when you start being obedient to God and you start being what the Lord wants you to be, it's going to affect people around you. The devil is trying to destroy as many people as he can. So God gives you faith, the devil gives you fear. Everything that God tries to do, the devil is the opposite. Look past the test and the trial that you are in right now. See past the fire. Stop worrying, oh, it's so hot, it's so hot, and you don't even know what to do and you get all discombobulated. When the fire gets hot, refuse to be burnt and call on the name of Jesus fire gets too hot for some people and they ball up and then they begin to ask God why do I keep going through this test and trial why are my finances never better why is my marriage why am I always going through these things because when you're in the fire when you're in the lines then when you're in the pit like Joseph you forget about Jesus you, you forget to look past your current situation too many times you know Instead of trusting God, you know, you, you get thrown in the fire and you're trying to put the flames out, you know? And what, what are the flames? Oh, I got bills, but I need to pay my tithes and offering. So how I'm going to put these flames out, I'm not going to pay my tithes and offering. And what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to pay the bills with that money. So I'm going to put the flames out on my own. But you wonder why, you know, God can't use you. You say you trust the Lord, 
But why are you trying to put the flames out yourself? Why not trust God, put God first and pay your tithes and your offering? Or God, in my case, Lord, I'm so lonely. You know, I, I'm, I'm tired of waiting for a wife. You know, you said you was going to, you said, you know, you're going to supply all my needs. And, and so instead of waiting on God, you know what I'm saying? All you see is the, all you see is the lions or all you see is the loneliness in that pit. You know, I'm always going to be alone and I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit older. Guy's not going to come through for me. So what do you do? You go out there and you try to find a girl yourself. And so, uh, sometimes, you know, God is merciful, but it, then it ends up in divorce and you wonder why you like, God, three, four years later, why is this happening? Why is this divorce? Why we just can't get right? Because you didn't trust God to do it. You try to climb out that pit yourself instead of letting God just come in there and take you out. And that happens so many times, man. And the devil is good at what he does. He is good at what he does. But God is better. God is so much better. He is so much more powerful. It is so easy lip service. Oh, yes, I trust the Lord. Oh, yes, I know that he said I'm the lender and not the borrower. Oh, yes, I know he said the cattle on a thousand hills is his. Oh, yes, I know that he said the righteous are never forsaken. But as soon as we start feeling that fire, oh, we forget about all of that. And that's what the devil wants. Because if we could begin to trust God, when we're in the fire, if we could begin to trust God when the lions are coming, that is when miraculous things will happen. That is when signs and wonders will happen. That is when revival will happen because that is the purpose of why we exist. When God formed us, it was to bring glory to Him. And we cannot bring glory to Him when we're trying to put out the flames ourselves. When we fully trust God, no matter how big the lion, no matter how big the giant, no matter how deep the valley, no matter how dark the pit, no matter who doesn't believe, no matter who's hating and speaking against you, when you truly believe in God and he is your backbone, that is when revival will come. That is when the blessings of God will come down on your life because God knows you can handle it. Some of us, we wonder, well, God, you know, why, why am I not financially blessed? Because God knows that if he blessed you with those finances, you wouldn't even be saved no more. Like the thorn that, that Paul has in his side, God puts that there in some of our lives because we need to, we need to depend on him. If we were so well off financially, we would never come to church. If our marriage was so perfect, we would never call to God. God is looking for people who want a relationship with him just because they want a relationship with him because they love him. Not because my marriage is so bad and that's the only time I pray to you when my husband or my wife is acting up or when my kids are acting up. Only when I feel the flames is when I call you. God doesn't want that type of relationship. God wants to no matter what I'm going through, when it's high, when it's low, when it's hot, when it's warm, I'm going to serve the Lord, I'm going to pray, I'm going to read, I'm going to fast, I'm going to worship, I'm going to praise, no matter what. And that is the person that God will use in a mighty way. This comes with sacrifice. Sometimes staying in that fire and not trying to put the flames out of yourself and trusting God is going to cost you. And it's gonna get a little hot, but I promise you, you will not be burnt. That lion might get a little close and you're like, man, God, they're gonna bite me. And, and, and it's gonna take sacrifice, it's gonna take faith. But I promise you, that lion will not devour you. But it takes faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith without works is dead. People can talk all day, I trust you, Lord, and blah, blah, blah. But when the bills are due, and you only have enough for your tithes and offering, trust the Lord. When your marriage is not going the way that you want it to go, trust the Lord. When your kids are acting up, trust the Lord. When you get fired from the job, trust the Lord. When your car break down, trust the Lord. See past the fire. See past the giant. See past the pit that you're in. See past the lies that the devil tries to plant in your mind and see Jesus and see victory and see deliverance and see Lord, I'm in this situation, but what kind of testimony am I going to be able to give once you bring me out? Get the proper thinking. Get the proper perspective and get to the point where it is all about God. It is all about giving glory to him. God, you know what? This fire is hot and I am sweating, but how am I gonna be able to give you glory through this? Get your mind on that and get your mind off the flames that you see around you and the lions that you see around you and the people who don't believe you like Joseph and they wanna throw you in the pit when you say, you know what? God's gonna use me, I'm chosen. 
humble yourself, trust God, and he will raise you up. And that's what God wants. That is a relationship with God. Not these, oh, you know, I'm going to read my Bible, you know, a chapter a day so I don't feel guilty. Or I'm going to pray this quick little five-minute prayer before I go to bed, you know, because I didn't talk to God all day, but I don't want to feel guilty. God ain't going to use you. You're not ready to be used. How you gonna reveal anything to anybody else, teach anybody else, help anybody else, if you don't have a real relationship with God? It's like dating, you know, in the beginning, the guy, you know, he tells the girl a couple things, can I get your number, take you out, she doesn't love her yet. But after he spends time with her, and they have conversations, 